All right, you guys, welcome to Taking Flight with me. My name is Mike Rocket Blackstone. I am going to be talking with you today about the Qatar Airlines incident that occurred in a Boeing 787. So I'm going to put on my airline cap today. I've got some time in a Boeing 777. But this doesn't matter what airplane you're flying. What we're talking about with the Qatar incident is a flying issue um, about basic flying skills and uh, the loss of situational awareness. So it says here in Simple Flying from simpleflying.com, details emerge regarding recent Qatar Airways Boeing 787 sudden descent incident. If you're not familiar with the incident, this was published on February 8th, 2023. Let's take a look at it here. And I'll just read a couple of lines of it for you here um, to give you the background. Basically, last month, a Denmark-bound Qatar Airways Boeing 787 Dreamliner was involved in an alarming incident that saw the aircraft suddenly lose altitude shortly after takeoff. The plane dropped below 1,000 feet while flying over the Persian Gulf on its way out of the carrier's Doha hub, but the situation was recovered. Okay, so the time of day also is, is of interest here. This happened, I believe, in the wee hours of the morning around 2 a.m. It was dark, it was late, uh, fatigue could have played a factor, of course, but most importantly, what we're talking about is, is flying uh, an airplane, hand flying an airplane, which is by far the most important skill that a pilot has. You know, so we talk about automation, we talk about um, crew coordination and leadership, and all of these things play a, a certain factor that are, that's it's indisputable and, and certainly great to use all of the automation that's available and to have great uh, leadership and captaining skills, which obviously saved this airplane. But how it got this far, we don't uh, we don't know. But what what I'm going to talk to you about briefly here is this. You know, here we have an airliner, but I can discuss with the, you with this uh, using a, a a model from a fighter plane because the, the, the skills are the same. And what they talked about in the article was the airplane had taken off and climbed to at two, at 1:59 in the morning. Uh, it climbed to a peak altitude of 1,850 feet at 2.01 in the morning and then suddenly descended at a maximum rate of 3,000 feet per minute, dropping to 850 feet. Again, this is a very low altitude incident. These airplanes are 200 feet long. You're within four wingspans, approximately, of the water. That's, that's really low and really close. And, and what had happened was is the airplane climbed up to 1,800 feet and then it went into a turn to go to the next waypoint, which is totally normal. What we do as airline pilots is we climb, we turn to headings, we track uh, navigational data from a GPS, and we descend. So really, this is well within the wheelhouse of, a, of an airline pilot's skill set, and it should be. Um, I'm not making excuses for, for the KTAR co-pilot, which was flying, and the captain he took over at some point, <clears throat> excuse me, but... Basically, these skills are, are absolutely critical, and we call them hand-flying skills, stick and rudder skills that are important to becoming a, a great pilot. It's a, it's a required skill. But basically, they were going to make a 47-degree turn. They talked about the heading, and they said he was going to, uh, and, and, and he had the flaps out too, So, um, which th this incident, which lasted 24 seconds, exceeded the Boeing 787's flap limits. They not only turned... Um, and lost control of the airplane. They do dove down and exceeded the, the flap limit as well. <clears throat> and the, it talks about the heading that they, that they did. So they turned from a heading of 157 degrees, so southeasterly heading, to a turn to 110 degrees. Uh, my high math is about 47 degrees worth of worth of turn here. We're not talking about a 180 degree turn. We're talking about a 47 degree turn, approximately that much of a turn. And during that time, this, this pilot um, went into a turn and we use the lift. So I've got the, the, the red pen here is lift. We use the lift to turn with and we use the lift to hold us up. So if you go into a turn and you start to increase the bank beyond say 45 to 60 degrees, you'll start to notice you have more lift pulling you down and less lift holding you up because we have to share the lift to turn and hold us up. You'll end up with the airplane losing altitude. 
right? So did this require a 60 degree bank turn to go 47 degrees? No, it didn't. So obviously they went into a steep turn, did not apply the appropriate amount of back pressure on the stick, which would, which would increase the lift. And as you reach 60 degrees of bank, it requires two Gs to, to sustain altitude and can, obviously it could keep climbing. And they didn't do that either. So went into a turn, relaxed the back pressure, obviously, uh, and or overbanked, and the airplane began a descent from 1,850 feet down to uh, 850 feet. And sub 1,000, the, the captain rolled the airplane upright, putting the lift vector toward the blue sky, or in this case, the dark sky, and began a, a, a subsequent pull-up and recovery and then flew on to um, Copenhagen, I believe it was, or Denmark. So, so as you fly airplanes, the stick and rudder skills are critical. And, and at night, it's an instrument uh, situation. When it's dark outside, the, the looking outside at the horizon is just not happening. So, so in darkness, it makes sense to obviously reference only the the instruments, looking down at the um, the primary flight display or the attitude indicator, and and keeping that. So these airplanes have velocity vectors, which really show where the airplane's actually trajectory is going. So there's no reason for this. This is this is a basic 101 piloting skill. I don't want to hammer them and, and and make fun of them, but really this is a this is a common skill that they should have, and knowing where the lift vector is pointed. And knowing where the velocity vector of the airplane is, is it on the horizon or is it below the horizon? Because if the velocity vector starts to dip below the horizon, the trajectory of that airplane is, is downward. Then, of course, you'd see the vertical speed increasing to a down minus 3,000 feet per minute. And with the bank over like that, it's not going to recover. And more pull at some point, if you get the bank over far, far enough, more back pressure, more pulling is going to cause the airplane to descend even further. So... Angle of bank is critical to where the airplane's going to go because where the lift is pointed is critical. When you fly airliners, it's the same as flying fighters. It's the same as, as any airplane. You need to know where that lift vector is pointed. So hopefully this has been uh, been import interesting to you, help you understand what had happened. Um, as we're moving into a new a new era of aviation hiring, um, it, I, there's another article which I'll discuss later. They're talking about a 600,000 um, pilot hiring over the next 18 years. A half a million pilots are going to be entering into the airline business uh, over the next 18 years. We need to make sure these guys get the proper training. We need to make sure they understand um, not only how to operate the systems in, in these complex, high-tech pieces of equipment, but literally how to fly them properly. And stick and rudder skills are paramount here. So uh, you've been watching Taking Flight with me. My name is Mike Rocket Blackstone. This is the KTAR incident. Hope you found it interesting, and we'll see you in the next episode.